All right, let's talk about type nine and doing Enneagram work from the position of already whole and what, what that might provide for the type nine. Because type nine is another one of these types that is going to find it particularly hard to do Enneagram work from the lens of already whole because nines are oriented toward what is missing in the world and what is missing within myself. Because nines are the great balancers of the Enneagram. And so when they see what is missing, then they want to bring that. And when they see where there's maybe too much of something, they try to minimize their impact because they want to bring balance. So they're noticing what's missing, what's here, how much am I allowed to be present and take up space and how much space do I need to leave for others? And so wholeness and the wholeness that exists within themselves is not always apparent or recognized in the type nine. Um, in fact, they tend to um, shrink down to whatever space they feel is available to them in a certain environment or space. So the very first thing that nines need to do is find their edges, right? Find the edges of themselves, feel into how solid they are, and that that is not an abomination or something wrong to have your own form, to take up space in the world is not inherently wrong. You're not an inconvenience just by existing and living and breathing by moving your arm and it pushing into the room, by standing up and filling more of the space, by speaking out and having your words take up space as the vibrations move out. All of this is simply what it means to be human. And yet there's something in the type nine that wonders if they're allowed to have a voice, to take up space, to grab that last piece of cake or to make a mark in the world, right? And so before the nine can even consider what would it be like to do Enneagram work from the position of already whole, they have to recognize that their wholeness is okay to experience. Because if we can't experience our wholeness and bring our wholeness into the world, then essentially we don't really fully exist. Nines don't even wonder if they're broken. They, they wonder if they're even here or get to be here or allowed to be here or wanted to be here. Do I belong? Do I get to have a form that moves through the world? that does things, that takes a parking spot, that drinks a glass of water and now there's less water for others, like all of these things. And it's not conscious, not every nine is consciously thinking this, but nines begin to, as they become more aware of themselves. And the reason why I say it's not conscious, a lot of our pattern behavior is not conscious to us, but especially nines, the defense mechanism is to fall asleep to themselves, to, become unobservant of how they are living their own lives. So oftentimes when I'm coaching nines or interacting with nines, I'll, I'll, I'll ask them about a certain phenomenon if they think that this is something that they experience or that happens to them. And initially they'll either say, I don't know, or I don't think so. And then maybe a few days later, I'll get a message back from them and they'll say, I do it all the time. I do it all the time. When you asked me that question, I was like, no. But because you asked me that question, I started noticing myself and I do it all the time. So that's a, one of the main sort of spaces that we're going to do some work around for nines is there's nothing wrong with you, but are you even aware of who you are? Are you even aware of the impact you make on others, of the patterned behaviors that you engage with, 
when you feel stressed or do they happen so quickly and you're so unobservant to your own operating system that you have no idea what you do when you feel stressed or you have no idea how it affected you when such and such happened. One of the, one of the phrases that I hear from nines often is, oh, it's fine. It'll be fine. I'm fine. Right? It's that smoothing over, smoothing over all of the humanity. And nines have just as much humanity as eights do. Nines have just as much humanity as nines do. I mean, as threes do. Nines have just as much humanity as sevens do, as sixes do. None of us comes to this world with less humanity. But how comfortable we are in expressing certain components of that humanity is dependent upon the narratives that we tell ourselves on an an ongoing basis. And if the narrative the nine tells themselves is, I don't know that I get to take up space, then even in their own consciousness, they won't let themselves take up space. Even in their own consciousness, others are taking up more space than they are. So the first part of being already whole for the nine is, let your own actions and life experience take up more space within your own awareness. And even that may feel wildly uncomfortable. All growth feels uncomfortable when we begin. Before I can ask a nine to take up more space in the world, and that's typically the advice given to nines, feel your anger, take up more space in the world, before I'm going to ask a nine to do any of that, which by the way, I'm probably not even going to ask a nine to do any of that, That will happen naturally as we deal with the unmet needs of the type nine. I'm going to ask the nine, how much space do you take up in your own consciousness? Because if you can't take up much space to yourself, how can you allow yourself to take up much space in the world? So just becoming aware of your own inner workings, of your own thoughts, of your own patterned behavior is going to be where we start because it is a radical act for the nine to be awake to all of their humanity. And as each thing pops up, this ambition, this desire, this hunger, this anger, this pleasure, this, right? It can be overwhelming in a beautiful way to realize I never knew all of this life was here within me. And as we start becoming aware of it, we start to say, you belong, and you belong, and you get to be here, and you get to be here, because I am already whole. So rather than judging every reaction, do you get to be here? Do I get to express you? Do you? It just is. It just is. I am human, and I have a form, and I get to be here. You wouldn't look at your hand and say, you know what, you take up this much space. I don't know, are you allowed to be here and take up that much space? It's like, well, what's the point of asking whether or not your hand gets to be here? It is here. Now, how do you use it in a way that is gonna serve you and your body and the needs that you have? I could use my hand to smack people with it, or I could use my hand to write beautiful letters and poetry and and such. It's the same with our internal space. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling desire and I'm feeling compassion and I'm feeling anger and I'm feeling, do you get to be here? No, no, they're here. How do we use them and the space that they take up in a way that serves us and who we wanna be in the world? We would never judge how big our bodies are, well, we do kind of judge how big our bodies are, but we never judge and say, oh my gosh, why do I have shoulders? I don't want shoulders. Shoulders mean now that they have to build a door that's wide enough for me to go through with shoulders. If everybody just didn't have shoulders, we could make our doors smaller. 
We wouldn't say that. We would say having shoulders is a part of being a human. So we build the doors wide enough so our shoulders can get through because they're a part of us. They're a part of a human body. We don't question it. We don't have surgeries that cut off our shoulders because someone arbitrarily decided that shoulders make it too difficult to walk through a doorway. We make the doorways big enough and we figure out how to live with shoulders and what our shoulders provide for us. And then we use our shoulders in the best way possible. We got our little backpacks on, we shimmy with them. It's the same with our emotions. It's the same with our inner experience. The minute we stop judging, if I should be able to take up this much space with my emotions, and we just say they're here. What kind of other experience of life would that give to you? What kinds of, how could you put your energy now rather than repressing all of that? Now we get to put all of that energy into figuring out how, how to use and maximize all of that humanity and life that is within you. When we're already whole, we don't have to cut off any parts of ourselves. And again, that doesn't mean that some of our emotions, we need to figure out how to use them in an adaptive way, just like my hand. I could use it to smack someone. I could use it to write. Same with my emotions. But just because I could use my hand to smack someone doesn't mean that I could also not use it for a good purpose. And doesn't mean that I cut it off because it has the potential to smack someone at some point. Yes. And I could just get more skillful at managing my hand so I don't smack people with it and I also don't have to cut it off. <laughs> right? So often that's what we do with our emotions. Well, this emotion has the potential to cause harm. So I'm just going to cut it off and not allow myself to feel it. Almost every body part has the potential to cause harm. We don't just mutilate ourselves. We learn how to use our bodies in a more productive, self-controlled way. And sure, when you're an infant, that feels ridiculous to think that I could control my hand so well that I could write an entire poem with it. When you're an infant, you're like smacking yourself in the face with your hands. You can't even like grab them together. You could barely fit them in your mouth. Just because when we first begin to awaken to these emotions, they're clumsy, doesn't mean that over time, we won't become so skilled that we could write in the most beautiful calligraphy. It's all in our perception. But if I view my emotions as indicating that I'm broken in some way and I turn against them and I try to repress them or I try to manage them or I try to mutilate them, that's not health. That's not growth. That's not approaching the Enneagram from already whole. And so with the type nine, it's almost one of the simplest types to do Enneagram work from already whole because all it means is that I just become awake to my humanity and my wholeness. And I start to practice using my emotions so that I become more skillful in managing them. And I don't have to walk around mutilated, cut off at the wrists. Because one of the things that the nine, when they're overusing that strategy of numbing and disconnecting from themselves, trying to take up as little space as possible, right? I could, I could cut off all my limbs and still be alive and take up less space. And also be less potentially able to do certain things in my life that I might want to do. I become, you know, cut off from potential, cut off from my own power, cut off from my creativity. Being afraid of taking up space can cause us to do some drastic painful and hurtful things to ourselves. 
So being already whole for the type nine just invites us in to say, what if I could learn how to be in my body rather than shrink my body? What if I could learn to access and, and channel my power rather than fall asleep to my power? What if I wasn't always having to orient towards what is missing, but I could be aware of what is here? I can be aware of both. I can be aware of what is missing and what is here. And then because I'm with myself and all the parts of me, I know what to do in this situation. The virtue for type nine is right action. I love right action. I talk about it all the time. Right action is the ability to be with what is true. And as I'm with what is true, not what I imagine, and not just part of what I can look at, but being able to be with all that is here, be with what is true, know from that being with, know what is mine to do, and then having the power to do it. That's right action. I see, I know, and I do. I see, I know, and I do. And when the type nine is with all of themselves and is awake, not only to themselves, but to the world, it sees, it knows, and it does. It takes the action that is right in that moment. That's being fully human. That's what we are delighting and expanding into as we do Enneagram work from this lens of what if I was already whole? What if there was nothing wrong with me? What if I wasn't slothful and lazy and I just need to work harder and sleep less and whatever the advice is for the nine? What if that's not the actual issue? What if it's just that I've mutilated myself so much that I feel powerless and then I feel angry and then I feel like I can't be angry. And so then I just numb because it's all too painful. And yet is the pain of my own doing? Have I been the one who has cut off my own power from myself? Have I been the one who is not comfortable enough to learn how to manage all of the parts of me so that I can be a full adult human who can run and write and paint and do whatever I want with my limbs because I've learned how to master them rather than cut them off. I've learned how to be with myself. That's the invitation for the type nine. 